Hi everyone. So what is intelligence? You can think of intelligence as the capacity to solve problems in an adaptive or flexible way. So if you take a game like chess, which is seen as requiring intelligence, you can't win a game of chess by following a preset sequence of steps. If you could, then it wouldn't require intelligence. But instead, it requires this kind of flexible planning and strategizing in order to get towards your goal, which is, in this case, to win the game of chess. And historically, our technology hasn't needed to be intelligent. You know, if you take the camera that I'm filming this with now, it's not intelligent. It just follows a sequence of steps that we program into it in order to capture the images. But if you consider a driverless car, well, then the image processing that needs to happen is comparable to our, our vision where it needs to discern the difference between the road and a person and perhaps contextual cues like uh, traffic lights and then integrate all that into a flexible strategy as to how to control the car. And there can be no fixed set of steps that allow it to safely drive um, in all circumstances. The kind of integration of all the context and all of these problems it has to solve involving sub problems, you know, that is the essence of intelligence. And that's why it requires artificial intelligence. And if you return to thinking about what intelligence is in the natural world, humans have, as they often do, tended to feel that our form of intelligence is somehow unique and special. And so humans have this capacity for intelligence in the form of symbolic thought. And this is grounded in language. You know, like right now, I can think in a sequence of words, a sequence of symbols, and try to communicate to you. You know, that's the kind of the goal here. And I'm flexibly, um, you know, selecting the words in order to communicate the information. And that requires a form of intelligence. And we feel when we introspect like there's a self, an ego, that has this capacity for intelligence and freely chooses the words. And, you know, this is the feeling of, of being a, a person, an identity, an ego, that possesses intelligence, that is intelligent. And this is a completely unscientific way of thinking about what's going on um, when we observe intelligent behavior in a system like myself. Or maybe you don't observe intelligent behavior. <laughs> but... Um, but this is, it requires this way of thinking, it requires superstitions like the self and free will that are incredibly widespread um, in kind of modern science. But if you step back and think, well, if that's not what's going on, if there isn't a, a, uh, an ego with a, with a will that has this capacity of intelligence, which is the kind of way Plato thought about this, that there was some kind of soul that possessed intelligence, that was some kind of transcendent capacity it just had. And that's clearly not a scientific picture of, you know, an account of why intelligence exists. So the scientific picture, if you want to understand how it is that a system like myself displays intelligent behavior, well, the answer lies in evolution. And before that, even in the life process, which is the kind of engine of evolution and the engine of intelligence. And so the life process is one of stumbling on solutions that allow the system to perpetuate itself over time. And that is the engine of intelligence. That is how adaptive, intelligent, flexible, problem-solving behaviors appear in our world because they perpetuate living systems. And so in ev this becomes evolution and all these things that you know, make up our biological system, they are intelligent processes that are powered by the life process. And that starts all the way down at single cells, each individual cell of your body, all the way up to the, the human brain, which is clearly still part of this biological picture and was crafted through evolution through the life process and nothing else. At no point is there uh, an extra layer of a kind of rational uh, ego that gets downloaded into the human organism. It's all this bottom-up picture of the life process and evolution creating this intelligence. But 
most people, you know, we have a culture where we've drawn this line and said, well, humans are intelligent. We possess some special rational faculty. And, you know, this goes back to the, to the Greeks in the, in Western tradition. Um, and the rest of nature is machine like dumb, you know, uh, mechanism. It's not adaptive. It's not flexible. It's not intelligent, but because we still carry that assumption, we see again and again now when people do research on animal behavior, there's this kind of constant feeling of, wow, look, octopi are intelligent. Other animals are intelligent. What a surprise. And we push back this border of thinking, okay, well, maybe other animals can be intelligent. And then now there's this burgeoning field of plant intelligence research. And it turns out plants are intelligent and bacteria. And if you, it, there's this feeling of, people still holding on to this boundary and thinking, well, we can reluctantly enlarge it until we accept the fact that the boundary was always an illusion. Intelligence is there in the start, in the life process. We are the same thing as everything else that's alive. We have the same features. There's no magical thing that comes into existence with humans. You know, plants are 99% of the biomass on earth. It's insane to think all of that exists in some way that's just inert, dull, boring material, and that this one particular animal, you know, within that 1% of all the biomass that's animals, you have this very recent addition to the, to the animal kingdom of, of Homo sapiens, to think that there, for some reason, on one arbitrary extreme tip of a branch on the evolutionary tree, intelligence comes into existence is just that's not a scientific or a, a reasonable way to think about what's going on here and how it is that intelligence comes to exist in systems like ourselves and in the rest of nature.